Today, it is always a pleasure to have you along. We consider it an honor to be able to bring this to your home uh, through whatever media you're watching on. You guys do know that you can check this out uh, on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel there. Charles, you just search Charles Vance Ministries, you'll find it. We started this message yesterday, this series of messages. Most people do not understand that fear is a spirit. You have to deal with it like a spirit. We're going to go back into a portion of this message series. When I come back, I'm going to tell you how you can get the entire series for your very own. Proverbs 28 and verse 1. What a revelation this scripture was to me probably 25 years ago. It says, The wicked flee when no man pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. The wicked flee. Evil people flee when nobody is in pursuit of them. I, it tickles me, and I know everybody that wears a hoodie up in the summer when it's 95 degrees. Some of them are cold. When you wear a hoodie and it's 95 degrees outside up over your face, I'm joking with you. You can almost always know if somebody's trying to hide their faith, they're afraid of people or they're up to something. You can just see it. If you're trying to run and hide, and those people, people like that that are afraid, the wicked flee when no man pursues. You, you will find those people with dogs that are mean or carrying weapons on themselves because they're afraid all of the time. They run when nobody is in pursuit of them. Fear always opens the door for evil activity. Most of us probably in here, I hope people that are watching know the story of Job, how the Bible said that he was a righteous man. Uh, but he had one little thing that he, he had kind of goofed up in his life. The Bible said every day he offered sacrifices for his sons and daughters because he was afraid that they had sinned against God. He had this thing. And, and the Bible says in, in Job chapter 3 when all of the, the horrible catastrophe took place in his life. His children were killed and all of his livestock was destroyed. And it seemed like everything that he had good was gone at that point. Job said, for the thing which I've greatly feared is come upon me. Now that needs to be something that we pay attention to because fear opens the door to the very thing that's trying to make us be afraid. If something can make you afraid, you just open the door to it to come into your life. Living life motivated by fear is a sin. The word sin means to miss the mark and forfeit the prize. It's the opposite of being confident or being persuaded that God's word is true. That's the definition of faith. Fear will present itself to everybody at some point. At some point, some more than others, uh, probably those who entertain fear more, he will be around more. And you, you have to learn to put fear on the run, just like you'd have to put a mean dog on the run or whatever the case is, because fear is a spirit. So you have to operate. We just finished a series of messages. One of the things you do with your words of faith that are untainted and unwavering is you can speak to demonic things and make them stop. Make them leave. Jesus did. We were instructed to do the same thing. Fear is going to present itself to you at some time or another. It'll sneak in even when you think fear ain't a, a million miles away from me. There'll be something pop up. If you don't know how to stop fear and make it leave, it'll take up residence in your life. Now, fear must be qualified. Most people that I've met are not afraid of everything. When I was growing up as a child, I was afraid of just about everything and everybody. Um, but most people are not. <clears throat> I'll give you an example. Uh, some people have a spirit of fear controlling one area of their life. I've seen people with uh, 
all kinds of money. We built some, our company built some really beautiful, large, nice houses. We built one house for a doctor. It was 7,500 square feet. It was the most beautiful home that we had ever built. It was absolutely extraordinary. Built another one for a business owner. It was 9,500 square feet. Those are huge houses, uh, more than what two or three people can live in. I mean, you, you'd be hunting for people in those houses that big. But nevertheless, they were, they were really big houses. And I look, that stuff still intrigues me. So I look in vacation areas for big houses just to see how much money they're selling for and where they are. Almost, almost without variation, big houses like those are not built on big estates. They're built right beside of somebody else. And I think, to me, that is one of the craziest things that you could do as far as building you an estate because, you, you know, the old, the old, old folk, well, it'd be old or dead folks now, back around the turn of the century, 1900, the people with really big money bought thousands of acres to build their home on, to build, to build a mansion on. They didn't want people they could reach across the room or reach across from one wall and touch the other wall on a house. And, and uh, I wondered why. And as I begin to build some of these houses for these people, people with big money are afraid. We built one of those houses for a guy that had, before we even got the house locked up good, f still working on it, he had cameras, he had an alarm system, it was all monitored, and he, he wasn't... 35 or 40 feet from the, the next house that was in his neighborhood. I have found that many times people that have a lot of money have fears in another area of their life. If they're confident, man, I'm loaded with money. I can do anything I want to do. I'm set for life, but they're afraid they're going to get sick. or They're afraid something's not going to work in their life. So what I'm saying is fear will attack in different areas. It'll do its best to find a weak place in your thinking in your emotions, in your circumstances, and it will attack there. Now remember, being afraid of anything gives that thing access into your life. Job said, the thing that I feared the most has come upon me. Faith causes activity in the kingdom of God, but fear stops activity in the kingdom of God. Fear stops faith. It is the expectation of evil instead of the expectation of God's Word coming to pass in our lives. Now listen, if you're listening to something all day long that is trying to cause you to expect evil, I'm telling you, I don't know when this is going to hit the air, probably in December, uh, this, this message series, uh, television. Uh, I'm telling you, you can't turn the TV on. You can't turn Facebook on. Nita told me the other day, you turn Facebook on, it's popping up. You need to get you a shot. You need to get your second shot. If you don't have your second shot, and we're going to start the third shot right away. So you need to get your third shot. And making people afraid of something that God has given us dominion over. Fear means that you're either terrified to do something or too timid to do something. Remember, faith is a spirit and fear is a spirit. So here they are boxing out each other. They're going to fight each other. Who's going to win? If you have faith in God and His Word, you're going to win. Faith is going to win. Fear won't win. But if you keep listening to stuff that is in contradiction to the Word of God, fear will win out. It will push your faith out of the way. It will displace your faith in God and His promises because faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing. It's a process. Fear cannot attack your spirit. It attacks your emotions. Did anybody ever notice that, that you don't just like get up one day and go, oh gosh, I feel like I'm possessed with fear. No, your brain goes to moving. Oh, what if this happens? What if that happens? An evil expectation is what fear does to you. If Satan doesn't have, if, listen, if Satan had access to your spirit, he would de-save you and throw you in hell right now, and he can't do either one of those things. He doesn't have access to your spirit, but he does have access to your mind. 
He attacks your emotions, and your emotions are the door to your spirit. Faith is a spirit that grows out or grows in your spirit, out of your spirit. Therefore, faith is more powerful than fear. Fear is satanic, and it doesn't have the ability to attack your recreated spirit. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That simply means the power that is inside of you is greater than any power outside of you. God works from the inside out. Satan works from the outside in. Fear will stop you from obeying the Word of God if you allow it to. Fear stops faith because it makes you too timid and too terrorized to be confident or persuaded that God's Word is true. And either way, it will paralyze you. It is the expectation of evil. Go with me to Matthew chapter 25. I want to read a little bit. Matthew 25. <clears throat> a great example of what faith brings, believing actually brings, faith that is in action is what we're going to read about, and fear, what fear will do, what it, what it will transmit into your life. Matthew 25, verse 14. This is Jesus talking this whole way through here. For the kingdom of heaven, or the kingdom of God, that's the way God does things, is a man traveling into a far country, is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants, delivered unto them his goods, and unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability. And that confused me for years. That phrase several ability is one word in the Greek, and it means his own ability. So if somebody has the ability to handle this much money, that's what he gave him. This much money, that's what he gave him. And then he took his journey, the Bible said. And the, the term that is used here is a talent. One talent is about a pound. About a pound of silver is about 300 bucks. A pound of gold is about 25,000 bucks. So whatever it was, I would say Jesus is talking about a wealthy man. So he's probably leaving these guys gold. Okay, it's a story. I'm not sure if it's a true story or if it's a parable, but just get the principle from it. Verse 16 said, Then he that had received five talents went and traded with the same and made another five talents. That's a pretty good uh, increase when you double your money. And likewise, he that had received two gained another two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. And after a long time, the Lord of those servants came reckoned with them. He's going to settle accounts. And so he that had received five talents came and brought another five talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Behold, I've gained five talents more. And watch his response. He said, well done, thou good and faithful servant or steward. You've been faithful or a good manager over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Same, ha same thing happened in verse 22 and 23 to the guy with two talents. Said the same thing. Well done, good, faithful servant. In verse 24, Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you were a hard man, reaping where you did not sow, and you gather where you've not strawed. Now, all that is, is uh, really is, shouldn't be uh, defined as a hard man that should be defined as a good manager, a good business owner. He said, I knew you were hard. He said, you reaped where you didn't sow. He said, now, you should have put my money to the exchangers or in the banks, what we would say today. The bank is a horrible place to put your money today. The interest rate is less than half of a percent in a savings account, which is ridiculous. I don't want to get off on that. Uh, Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received my own with usury or interest. Therefore take the talent from him and give it unto him which hath ten talents. Now the moral of this story is, Verse 29, unto everyone that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance, but from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. So he said, if you're going to use what you've got, I'll give you more. But if you don't use it, 
I'm going to take away what you've got and give it to somebody who will. You know, we'd be crying foul. The, the, the liberal news would be crying foul today if this story were read on television uh, or the radio and let them know that Jesus was the one that was uh, the teller of this story. They would be saying, oh, that, that's not right because there's, we need to spread the wealth around. That's not what Jesus said. Jesus said, if you don't do what you're supposed to do with what I've given you, then what you've got, I'll take it away from you and give it to somebody that will multiply it and increase it. Now again, the moral of this story, moral number two, if you will, of this story, is if you're afraid, you won't do what you're supposed to do. I don't care who gives you what, how much you have at your disposal, what kind of a title you might have, what kind of a managing, managing position you've been given, if you're afraid, you won't be doing what you're supposed to be doing. Notice again, fear stopped the man with one talent from doing what the Bible said he was capable of doing according to his own ability or his several ability. In Judges chapter 6, Israel had sinned and the Israelites were terrified by their enemies, the Bible tells us. That fear was controlling Israel. You remember the story about Gideon? Because Israel repeatedly sinned, the Midianites took control of them for seven years. They would come in at harvest time, the Bible said, and destroy their crops just to be mean. Take control of them. Make them give them stuff. They'd make them pay taxes to them. And the scripture says that it's all because Israel sinned against God and God just stepped away and gave them into the hand of the Midianites. I don't want to be there. Israel cries out to God, God, where are you? What are you doing? Come and help us. We're in a mess down here. And the angel of the Lord appears to Gideon and said, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. He told him to call an army together to defeat the Midianites. Gideon made all kinds of excuses. He said, My family's the least. We don't have any money. We don't have any power. And you're calling me a mighty soldier. He said, You know... <clears throat> How could I possibly do it? And, and the angel just, tell, t just kept telling him, go get an army together. Go sound the trumpet. First of all, he told him, he said, I want you to destroy these false gods that are set up in Israel. And he destroyed Baal and the Asherah poles overnight. The Bible said he cut all the, the grove down and, and turned Baal over. Uh, I, you know, if you got a god you can turn over, you need to find you another one. Uh, that's just goofy to me. Somebody would serve something and you could walk up behind and go, and he'd fall on his face. Uh, after some persuasion, the angel talked Gideon into calling an army of 32,000 men together. And in Judges chapter 7, Gideon told those men, if you're afraid, I want you to go home. And he had 32,000 he started with and 22,000 of them said, okay, we're going home. After another process of elimination, there was only 300 men of faith that were left. And the Bible said the Midianites came as grasshoppers for multitude. I can't imagine what an army that big would look like. They said both they and their camels were without number and they were entering into the land to destroy it. And Judges chapter 7 and verse 9 said, It came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto Gideon, Arise and get thee down unto the host, for I have delivered them into your hand. Now to me this again is interesting that God is telling Gideon what he's already done. I think one of our biggest mistakes as Christians today is not knowing what's already been done for us. I grew up in a church thinking that God was so big that He could do for everybody just because he was so big, if you got his attention, if you could cry enough, or if you could make yourself feel, look sorry enough, make him feel sorry for you. But the fact is, all of it's already finished. And God said, I've delivered the Midianites into your hand. He said, now you've got some reservations. What he was telling Gideon, we'll, we'll look at this in just a, just a moment. He said, you've got some reservation, but he said, uh, you need to go down. You just need to go down. Take, take your buddy with you and go down. 
Has God ever told you anything like that? That he's already delivered you? He's already got it? I got this? And, and then what do you do with it? See, because that's the point of, of either crossing, kicking fear out, or, or letting fear stop you in your tracks. How about no weapon formed against you will prosper? You're more than a conqueror through him that loves you. You can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. Nothing can separate you from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. My God shall supply all your needs, desires, wants, business, according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. All of us need to be reminded on occasion. Fear feeds on ignorance. The longer you're ignorant, the more fear will feed more people are afraid of the unknown than anything else. Ignorance causes most people to presume or assume the worst. Truth corrects presumption. And hope displaces fear. The apostle Paul prayed for the church at Ephesus and said that he, he prayed for them to know what the hope of their calling was. That word hope means the expectation of their calling. When he writes to these people, sometimes these churches, you would think that he's writing to people who are lost, but he's writing to people who are born-again believers, spirit-filled. And he's telling them that they, there is something that you've got that the world doesn't have. There is an expectation that belongs to you that if, if you grab hold of this, that the work is already finished. This is the same Paul that said uh, all the works were finished from the foundation of the world. The same apostle Paul that said... For all of the promises of God in him are yea and amen. Same God. It's telling us this stuff is already done. And God told Gideon, I've already given you the Midianites. Now watch this in verse 10. But he said, but if you fear, he's talking, God's talking to Gideon, go thou with Purah, thy servant, down to the host, and thou shalt hear what they say and afterwards shall thine hands be strengthened. So they went down, he and his servant, outside of the armed men where the host was. Now watch, go down uh, if you're following, verse 13. He, uh, I want you to watch how knowledge displaces fear. And when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man that told a dream unto his fellow. Now watch, Gideon and his servant is hiding outside of the camp of the Midianites God told him, listen, if you're afraid, go down there. Just listen to him talk for a few minutes. He said, things will begin to change inside of you. If you could just hear the devil talk about you, I've got to, I've got to get something over on them. Man, they're hearing too much word. I've got to hit them with something. I've got to keep, I've got to keep going at it, man. I've got, if, you could just, if you could hear him talk, you would know that he knows and they've got the Holy Spirit inside of them. There's nothing I can do unless I can get this spirit of fear into their lives. And his fellow servant, oh, wait, wait. And Gideon was come, and when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man that told a dream unto his fellow and said, Behold, I dreamed a dream. There was a cake of, of barley bread that tumbled onto the host of Midian and came unto the tent and it, and it killed everything that it fell on and overturned it, and, and the tent was laying along. And his fellow answered and said, these are the two of the Midianites talking to each other, this is nothing else except the sword of Gideon. They had a dream. God gave the Midianites a dream that Joshua was going to bust them, that he was going to destroy them. What they don't know is what Joshua knows is he's got 300 men, but he's got God on his side. And it was so, verse 15, when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and the inter interpretation thereof, that he worshiped and returned into the host of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord hath delivered into your hand the host of Midian. Isn't it amazing that God can speak the exact same thing to us that somebody else will speak to us and we'll listen to the people faster than we'll listen to God sometimes? Better make sure you're listening to godly counsel. Boy, that's up in my spirit today. Gideon and his three, 300 followed the instruction of the Lord and they defeated, actually the Midianites defeated themselves. When you choose to believe the report of the Lord, the spirit of fear has to leave. 
Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Watch this. What are you afraid of? Stop expecting evil and expect good. That's where we need to be every day. That's the faith that displaces fear. Thank you for joining me on the program today. Always great to have you along. You've been watching a portion of this series of messages. What are you afraid of? Uh, a lot of people are afraid of a whole lot of things. Well, I told you as we started this program, fear is a spirit. You have to learn how to deal with it. When you learn how to deal with that spirit and cast it out of your life, you can learn to live a fear-free life. I hope you'll order this series of messages. Listen to it over and over again. It's going to change your life. You can order one of three ways. You can go to our website. You can call that number that's on the screen, or you can just write. Thank you for ordering the products. The money goes back into ministry. You're helping us take this good news around the world. If you're being blessed by the ministry here at Empowered, help us be a blessing to others by sowing a seed this month. Here's how you can do that. Empowered Ministries is dedicated to reaching our world with the love of Jesus Christ. Your financial support is helping us extend God's grace to the multitudes and empowering us to reach the lost, heal the sick, feed the hungry, and to bring hope to the hopeless. Through Empowered Television, we're impacting nations by teaching believers to thrive in their calling and to live successful, powerful, and productive lives. If you're being blessed by the ministry here at Empowered, you can help us continue to do the works of Jesus by sowing a seed this month. With your gift of any size, you'll receive our monthly partner letter. And with your gift of $41 or more, we will also include a special teaching by Pastor Charles Vance that will take your faith to another level. When you become an EMT partner, you are helping us transform lives around the world. And we believe what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. Thank you so much for your gifts of support. We appreciate you more than words can tell. I'm praying for you every day. Before I leave the air today, I want to give you an opportunity to invite Jesus into your life. Jesus loves you. You know he already died for you, so it's already done. The Bible said he's not holding the world's sins against them. It's up to you to accept what He's done for you now. And you can do that with a simple confession of faith. Will you do it with me? Say this out loud. Heavenly Father, I invite Jesus into my life. I confess Him as my Lord, my Master. I believe He died for my sins, and Father, You raised Him from the dead. Thank You for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, minute from your heart, welcome to the family of God. We've put together a Get Started packet for new Christians. It's our gift to everyone that's prayed with us today. You can get yours by going to our website, charlesvance.org. When you get there, press the New Believers tab. Fill out that information. We'll get that packet right back out in the mail to you. And then get in a faith-based church somewhere. And always remember, stay in the Word. You will stay empowered.